Okay. Whew. Phew. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. I was nervous that only um, Matt would be here. <laughs> so we were talking earlier and he was like, I'm going to come to that session. So I'm glad to see there's an interest in this. Uh, I'm Allison. I'm a former classroom teacher and I now work at Brain Pop. Um, so just I want to get a sense of who you are very quickly. So um, just by show of hands for a moment, um, how many people here are teachers? Educators. Um, how about uh, administrators? Okay. Um, uh, academic, university related positions. Some are like multiple, both. Um, game developers or developers of children's media. Okay. Other? There's got to be other. Librarians. Oh my God, that's like my dream job. How did I not say that? Li library media specialist librarians. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so, and how many people are uh, familiar with Brain Pop? Oh, cool. Okay. Um, familiar with Scratch? Great. And VidCode? Good. So I know for sure you're going to walk out of here introduced to something new and exciting. Um, so the plan for today is to um, actually get you doing some coding work pretty quickly. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on what we've been working on at Brain Pop. And then if you have a, um, an iPad or a uh, laptop, uh, we can pull those out. If not, hopefully we can gear up and share. Somebody can, can use mine as well. Um, and we're going to play around and do some coding, and then we'll kind of debrief all together. So I like to start with this quote from Mitch Resnick, one of the co-creators of Scratch. So I'll give you a second to read it. So the idea is that we teach all kids to write. We don't expect that every kid is going to grow up to be a professional writer, but we think there are some inherent life skills embedded in learning to write. And the same could be said for coding or computer programming or computational thinking, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, we want to expose kids to the, develop these skills. doesn't mean that every single kid will, will decide that they want to be a, a professional coder, but there's some really important life skills in there. And so um, Brain Pop is very well known for making these short animated videos on hundreds of topics, and we've got some interactive activities that go along with those. In the past few years, we've really committed to creating student creativity tools. So not only can kids come to Brain Pop to learn about a topic that they're interested in, they can also play games about that topic and now create their own artifacts to show what they know about that topic. So the approach that we took with coding is a project-based approach. So um, we, there are some amazing um, coding games out there. We have many of them on uh, Brain Pop's Game Up. Um, many of those games take a puzzle-based approach to coding. So it'll be kind of like a um, code the monkey to the banana or code the puppy to get the bone or whatever. Um, that's a puzzle-based approach. We decided on a project-based approach, again, to get kids and teachers to think about coding as a means of self-expression, as a way for kids to show what they know about a topic. Just like as a teacher, I might say to my kids, you can create a poster to show what you know, or create a slideshow or a diorama. So we're trying to um, push the needle in that direction. Um, we um, love Hour of Code and Code.org. Is, is there anybody that's not familiar with Hour of Code? So the, this idea of Hour of Code is there's a week in December where Code.org um, kind of created this movement to encourage people to take an hour to just stop what they're doing and learn, ex try out some coding. And Code.org puts together hundreds of different resources to try and do this. So at Brain Pop, we did it as a staff. Um, a lot of teachers are embracing this and doing this with their students. Um, but we're trying to get people to not only embrace that, but push beyond that and think about using code any time of year, no matter what topic you're doing, 
weaving it into that topic instead of learning how to code kind of in isolation. So learning or uh, dipping your toes in the water during this isolated week or um, kind of focusing on getting your first exposure to code in a context about coding instead of weaving it into what you're already learning about. I hope that made sense. Um, and the other big thing about this approach that we've taken is that it's really designed for a teacher like me, so your average third or fourth grade teacher who gets that computer science and coding and programming is important, but has no idea whatsoever how I would bring it to my kids. Um, so it's scaffolded in a way that you don't have to have any background in coding in order to introduce it to your students. Um, and we know that um, in the UK, it's already a, a national standard more and more states on a daily basis are adopting uh, coding standards. So it's coming to the US pretty quickly, um, and we know it's coming. So hopefully this is a, a tool that will make our lives as educators easier. Um, so I want to show you just a couple of samples of the work that students have done using creative coding with BrainPop, and then we're going to dive in and play around with it a little bit. So this first example is a Scratch project um, about Frida Kahlo, and the project is called the Digital Museum. So essentially kids are curating items and coding them to share facts that they know about them and then to animate them in some way using Scratch. We have Moby's beeps that are not, the sound is not working apparently. But. So this is one that a fifth grader did in a single class period. She hadn't had any coding background before that. Well, my computer is stuck. Maybe turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself if you haven't already. <laughs> and I'll be right with you. <laughs> Are you teachers? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what grade? Third. Uh, Third and fourth, my favorite. Third also. Oh, together? Nope. Oh, nope. okay. Cool. Nice that we have this time. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. We're back in business. So this one is an example of an eighth grade teacher who was looking for a way to try to weave coding into his science class, having not done that before. And so this uh, is not actually um, animated or anything, but I just wanted to give you an example. This is a project called Make a Meme. So kids, like, don't you want to be the teacher that assigns that to your students? You have to make a meme about fill in the blank, whatever the topic. So they were doing periodic table of the elements, and this student made one about gold, pretty clever. And you can see, this is VidCode's um, text-based platform using JavaScript. You can see the code kind of behind the scenes for the project that they made. Okay, here's another one in Scratch. And this one was, we, there was an Earth Day event that BrainPop got involved with. This is by a ninth grade student who stayed with us. It was kind of like different stations set up around the room and the kids could move freely. And she just stuck with this project and stayed with us for way more time than we uh, expected any kid to say, but she was, got really into it. So it's a bit more of a sophisticated project with scene changes.
Okay, and I have one more to show you as an example. This one is one that a teacher made, um, and it's called a newscast project, also with VidCode. <coughs> So the idea of a newscast is you pick an image or a video clip and then you code a scrolling headline below it. So just kind of to provide a little bit of, of inspiration, I wanted to look at these examples. Um, I'm going to show you a, a very short video on um, introducing you to the interface. So we'll watch that. This is for a scratch project, the digital museum project. And then you can choose between two different topics. I'll give you a URL. And uh, you can choose to play around with either Scratch or VidCode and try coding your own project. So this is a very brief introduction to using creative coding on BrainPop. The Digital Museum Coding Thanks. That's actually a kind of a rough draft. So there's been a couple changes. When we go into the interface, you'll see some of it looks a little bit different. Um, OK, so, um, so you'll, you notice probably that we've got Scratch or VidCode embedded in BrainPop's website. We've integrated our own art assets, so kids are able to um, use characters in their projects that they're familiar with. Um, and uh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to demo any more of it than showing you that intro video, just to kind of see what you think of it. And your feedback would be great. So any areas that you feel like we need to put a little bit more support in or whatever, we, I'm, I'm all, all ears. So let's say we'll um, pick a coding project and we'll work for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. When you click on this link, um, I'll put the link back up in a second. You're going to get to this page. And you can either choose to try out a project on Martin Luther King Jr. or on recycling. And you could choose to do it with Scratch, which is the digital museum project, or VidCode. Uh, with Martin Luther King, it's a, um, creating a flag that represents the topic, so Martin Luther King, or creating a meme. I think those are the two projects in there. So here is the link and if anybody needs a computer you're welcome to use mine you can team up and work together so happy coding i'm available if you have questions Do you want to use my computer? Okay. You're, wel you're welcome to if you don't feel like taking it out. Ah, no worries. No problem.
probably won't work great on a phone because it's so tiny, but you're welcome to use my laptop in front of you, Mom. Okay. Yeah. This is so cool. Yeah. This is going to be um, Espanol also. Uh, so we, I was just at the Scratch conference and a couple people asked for it in different languages. So now that we're hearing that there's a request for it, I mean, this is so new for us. So we kind of figure oh, yeah. like all of our stuff, we let it live for a bit, see what we need to refine. Five bilingual school. Uh, so it's, okay. Um, the kids are 50% since kindergarten okay. all the way up. Okay. 50-50. Awesome. And, um, teachers are really excited okay. just to just demo with a bunch of them. They just never saw this Espanol yeah. before. Ah, it's so exciting to introduce them. Okay. And, we're trying to not introduce anything new unless we also have a people of language. Uh, well, that's fair enough, yeah. However, <laughs> I can do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this, and I, I will talk about this um, also. So this is like a new experiment that we're doing where creative coding is like an add-on package. So you have to have Bring Pop and then add this coding um, feature package onto your subscription. Um, are your kids logging in with individual accounts? Um, uh, I don't really know okay. at the moment what they're doing. I can we're show you. To go one, we're going to be one-to-one oh, wow. one here from now. Very cool. So Where's your school? And that's uh -huh. it. Nice. Um, so we're getting ready to do Google Classroom, and that's yeah, like a big yeah. prep year. Cool. Um, but I used I was a, I was an ESL teacher briefly. Okay. Until this job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we use it all the time. Very My cool. The ESL version. Very cool. So I've, I'm a big. Um, it's almost 15 years. Awesome. Using awesome. It's amazing, right? I always describe it as like a cult. <laughs> like <laughs> once you. That. Be, I know. <laughs> um, I'll give you my card. I'm going to make myself a note that okay. there's a request, and maybe once we start heading in that direction, if your s kids want to test it out. Well, and the other um, thing that we can do that I'm pushing for is when it doesn't exist, we make it. So we take totally. This we'll cut out I'll totally. Cut out paper yeah. Out. You tell me what it would awesome. Say to I would love to connect with your kids. We can do a like a Skype call if they want to do like a Q and A and just to acknowledge whatever you're doing. So. Well, uh, what's your name? Hollis. I'm sorry. Okay. My so principal did forgot to register. Oh, and nice. And I'll visit. Well, yeah. Thank cool. You. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll give you the full URL. Let me just check it. I think it's uh, here. You know, let me just turn around. Everyone doing okay? Okay, one moment. I'm going to come right over. So I'm typing this in to resize yeah. so that I can move things around. Will yeah. that also move things? Um, no, but if you click on this little drop down or anywhere on that purple bar, you can kind of see what the next few okay. steps are. I should have actually shown the and intro video okay, for this great. too. There is one, um, if you scroll up a little bit, um, you can see the same. Uh, we know that. Okay, interesting. So, Cut off here, oh. but on Brain Pop we do have like a little intro oh, video okay. the same way. But yeah, so the next few steps are changing the position, okay, and transparency, adding text to it. Yeah. Hi. Oh, we're trying to move our water bottle. Okay. And we mm -hmm. very similar oh, okay. question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great minds. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure. Um, so this so information we need over here. Okay. So the one thing that everybody gets caught up with and you use it with your kids like what are we doing wrong we're doing everything right what could it be so look back at the water bottle that one the variable is called my graphic two and right here you're editing my graphic one so if you change that to a two 
you should see it move, your water bottle move over on the x-axis. Let's see, I from right. That x equals, so let's, let's move that after the, move what? Uh, the, I'm not sure what the last you three characters, text yeah. You some text in there based on your copy paste. X is not defined. Oh, take out the VAR in the beginning. Copy too much. There we go. There we go. It didn't shift over. I'm not sure if you it saw. It, yeah, it shifted yeah. over. So then what if it's still not where we want it? Okay, so you're just going so to experiment with that number. With this number? With this number that here. Number. So anything you're manipulating with, with the water bottle, you're going to call my graphic 2. Okay. And then dot x dot y to move it on the x and y just axis dot just scale. Plain just plain 90? Just plain 90s you work those. And it's all about experimentation with the numbers and the kids will do the same thing. What if you make it 290? I'm just curious to make sure that it's actually significantly moving. Oh. Okay, it is. It okay. is. So, all right. So now, now, if you wanted it now on I the think x axis this way. Mhm. Mm what would you we'll do? Just go for a smaller number. Smaller number. And what if we wanted it to go up why somewhat? Okay, so now we, we want to add. We want to do is make it smaller, don't we? But we want to make it smaller. If you, well, if you click yeah. on this purple bar, or that little drop down arrow, anywhere on the purple bar will bring it. This shows you all the steps uh, that are coming. So you're changing the position, you're changing the size, which is dot scale. And you can always go back and revisit those oh. steps because I don't see the code for changing the scale. But maybe you want the water bottle smaller and the speech mm -hmm. bubble bigger, yeah, vice versa. That's so that's all in there. Let's the other thing is um, sometimes you have to like scroll up to see the rest of the text in oh, there. Oh, that's what we yeah. missed. Yeah, okay. We didn't see this part. Add words to the mean. Don't we want our water bottles to talk? Yeah, we, I was going to put some words in here. Cool. So it'll walk you through adding your text. It's a little hard to see on the smaller screens, but if you scroll down this section, Click on the Effects tab, and you'll see a text block. When you click on that or drag that in, now scroll back up so you can see it. It's actually already in there. You can oh, look okay. up. But scroll back up. So now you have text in there. It's very light because it's on oh, the white water okay. bottle. But the next few steps will walk you through ed gosh, editing the text and moving it. It's the only way you can get this if you have a subscription. To BrainPop, right? yeah. Brain and I'll talk about okay. all of that. But So this is a new thing that we're trying out. Um, so you need your you need a subscription to brain pop and this is considered like an add-on package for oh, called creative coding okay. so you'd add it onto your subscription but um, are your kids logging in with their individual accounts they're my brain pop? we don't have a brain pop account okay right now. so I'll I will talk a little bit more I about it but the, the idea ones. is and there's plenty <laughs> of free content and this is free I mean you so can if use I went this to one of the free videos then this would I could no, but you could use the link that I gave you, oh, and okay. then for like around um, for CS for all, we're going to be putting even more free content on. Oh, okay. So we will have it on more than just recycling and MLK Jr. Okay, but um, yeah, I can give you my card if you have any questions about oh, it or anything. You can always email. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. What's your name? Sally. Sally. Okay. okay. Yeah. Allison. So Allison, when I do change these numbers, yeah. is this when I change it? Nothing is happening. So let's put this on a separate line. So let's go, yeah, after each semicolon, let's move it to a new line. So this one too. Okay. So this is undefined, right? Okay. My graphic line, see how this is my graphic line? Nothing yet to undefined. So you can take out line four unless you know what it was and you can just add it back. So my graphic two, if you change that to two, yeah. So that should be the detergent bottle and you add a number after the X. Okay. Now take out or, or So you, uh, 
and this is like a troubleshooting thing that you do with your kids too, right. like a little mini lesson. You always want to look and see. So my detergent bottle, my, my detergent bottle is variables name is my graphic two and the speech bubble is my graphic three so anytime you want to modify the speech bubble you make sure you're using my graphic three dot x dot y dot okay. scale etc okay yeah Thank you. yeah With um, the Scratchers 3.0 integration, like in January, are you guys like going to like update your UI? This is Scratch 3.0. Yeah, it right already, oh, okay. but um, we don't have things like the sound editor or paint editor in yet. But it will be in our next okay. version. So we're working very closely with them yeah. to. Nice. And you, so you yeah. guys are working. Like, it's a close collaboration. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah. It's yeah. like <laughs> a dream partnership. Okay. I awesome. mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. We've done Scratch. Cool. Workshops. Teach, teach so oh, very cool! Very cool. Um, the, what to like? What in what context? Are you teachers? Or are you? Oh, okay. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Your go-to. Yeah. So, um, I've only used one of their so far. Okay. They give out these like kits to teachers that you'd already know about the kit. I was like, that's pretty awesome. She walked me through that. That was awesome. Yeah. I had been kind of making my own stuff up and using some of those tutorials. Okay. Then yeah. Those, yeah. Like, Very cool. I've been trying to encourage kids to it's cool when you need to make something, ask your teacher. Yeah. Like, right? It's, so much, like, it's legit. Yeah, it's, yeah. Legit. It's, it's legit. legit. It's like really yeah. trying to get yeah. teachers yeah. to yeah. embrace yeah. that and kids yeah. to think yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. So, like exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If they know it's like this creative thing and it could impact their, you know, they're, they're, they're getting experience and like, right. and like getting a sense of like behind the scenes, like just how you move something on an x-axis <laughs> using code is kind of like, <laughs> yeah, <Exactly. laughs> kind of powerful yeah. and empowering. Yeah, we were talking about empowering. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. And then, yeah, a lot of the kids that I will make accounts and then they'll go home and they'll be like, yeah. okay, and I'll come back next thing and like, oh, I already worked on that. Yeah, and totally. Like, like here's my finished thing I mean, and it's like, sort of yeah, like yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wish you guys were my librarian. <laughs> Are you in Madison? Or? We're in Madison. Yeah. Cool. Or, or okay. Okay. I'm in Madison. Okay. Okay. So cool. So cool. Really? Yeah. Wow. And from the size of 15,000. So most like, kids have parents. Yeah. They don't. They might be exposed. To yeah. Parents, yeah. They don't get the time. As yeah. Parents. Yeah. So totally. it's a lot of advice and things already, which is very grateful. Yeah. 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 Like Minecraft's great, but like there's right. other things too. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. No, I like the approach of like tying it into topics. So like whether you're a social yeah. studies kid or a math kid or an ELA kid or like a kid who's really into boogers or whatever. Like it's all you know. <laughs> Can yeah. I peek at the time on your? Oh okay. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Three. Yeah. There's. Um, here, this is a demo of company, but like we had built out stuff for this is like an information literacy, and I think we had built way back. I don't know, anyway, yeah, yeah but cool. tying it into like information yeah. literacy yeah. Or, or any sort of totally. Concepts, yeah, I mean, so I've heard so we could talk about this when we debrief. Um, let's yeah. let's keep yeah. coding for five more <laughs> minutes and then we'll come back together. Five minute warning. Um, so digital uh, digital literacy or like beginning of school, like thinking about how you can use it to, you know create a digital museum about our classroom rules or a meme about, you know, like there's so many cool ways to weave it in. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yay. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think the empowerment is like just as much for the teachers as it is because I feel like so many teachers want to be the, you know, like I was saying, like I get that this is a thing. I would love to be the teacher that introduces it, but like when am I going to do that and like where do I start and how and uh, yeah. 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 Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm just looking playing really around. good. Good. Yeah. It's looking good. Everyone okay back here? Looks good. Playing? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay.
You doing okay? I just have a little bit of an issue. Okay. So I don't know why it's doing. So um, take out the VAR. You don't need that after you've established what it is. So just, um, let's see, my graphic two should be the Lincoln Memorial. Uh -huh. Okay, so it looks like you did make it smaller. Mm -hmm. And then here, uh, put a space after the equal sign and, and take out the VAR and see if that helps. Let me take out that whole line and put it, oh, because it's, see the space in between my and graphic? There we go. Oh. Yeah, it's good it over. So many like little things yep. like that, but it's like such a great teachable moment with kids. Like, what am I doing wrong? And they eventually, it's, you know, oh, yeah. just that one it's little, so yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah? Thank you so cool. much. Cool, yeah, of course. Uh, you mean like start on the scene and then go to another yeah, scene? Yeah. yeah. So if you keep going, um, adding more blocks, you'll get one. You just have to scroll down. I think you've got them down here. Yeah, if you haven't already. Um, but there is, yes, you can do that. slow is it just because it's like taking a lot of... Oh, it does look like something about Oh, weird. I have a lot of stuff on this. Okay. Mine was acting really, what you saw before, it like, I clicked on one oh, thing yeah, and it spinning. like, so I don't know if it's lots of people on the same thing. I don't know. Yeah, we're on the guest line. Yeah, yeah, not the best, yeah. Sorry about that. So is this something like the, is the, the link that you gave, is that the only way to get into the so Scratch, this is like an, a special custom version of Scratch. So you can obviously just go to Scratch and, and you know, explore Scratch. But the BrainPop integration with Scratch is, that's the way to get to it through BrainPop. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love your rainbow. <laughs> So scale is going to make it bigger or smaller. So we don't know what the current scale is. So, so it's at one right now. Add a little, add a, um, uh, sp yeah, add a space before and after the equal sign. I wondered about that. Yeah. It's funny how like the tiniest little thing makes a difference. Because I have this. It read it anyway. Yeah. My graphic like one, which should be your speech bubble. So do you want to change the size of the speech yes. bubble? Okay. We want to make it smaller. Okay. Yeah. Point 0.5. Okay. I can't see why. My, ah. Um, so there's an extra um, letter in your variable name. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Zoom. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, whoops. I guess she left it like that for a reason. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm just randomly picking numbers. Am yeah. I, is there a shortcut to that? No. Or is that, it's no, just but effort. you could give the kids the, the, okay. the range of it, which is 640 by 480 uh, oh, in here. Okay. Um, but it, uh, I think a lot of it is like the magic of not telling them and letting them figuring it, figure yeah. it out. And you, you let them play for 10 minutes and then you pause and like, hey guys, has anybody figured out? Right. You know, is there like, what's center? What's the midpoint? I see a lot of though. And, um, I, yeah. Yeah. It, it just depends. And you know your kids. So right. if you anticipate that, then yes. Yeah. Okay. The first five minutes that you model might be, yeah. you know, then the demonstrating. The question is, Okay, th that, and then, what was my other question? Um, oh, was there a shortcut? Like, I'm, I'm 
pressing enter and every line I'm typing my text to dot whatever. Oh. Um, is there? Mm, it doesn't am, am auto I, type. I, I comma something and put it all in one line. I don't because I find for troubleshooting okay. I like to see it all in one. But like, what do I know? I don't. I'm okay. you know. I'm learning this as I go, but a shortcut or no. I'm doing it with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do teach kids how to copy and paste because yeah. I feel like that's a legit skill yes. to learn. But there's no like some of the platforms um, autofill once you start, but this doesn't. Yeah. All right. So I don't like to be the person that pulls people away from coding, but we we've we've got a little bit of time together, so. Um, let's just do a quick uh, share out, especially um, I would love to hear from people who maybe don't feel super confident in coding. What did you think about this approach or just initial impressions? If it's more comfortable, we can turn and talk to the people around us. Not sure. Okay, start us off. <laughs> We don't do that. Um, we're starting with this model that we don't do that. And if we get a lot of requests and find a way to do that that feels safe to brain pop than we would, where brain pop tends to be super sensitive. Um, so we don't have a way for kids to import images on any of other, our other features yet. Um, but. Yes, but uh, somebody else was asking about, so the new version of Scratch 3.0 will have a paint, a paint editor and a sound editor, um, allowing kids to create their own backdrops, their own sprites, their own objects. Um, so that's kind of the, what we're focused on adding in. Hopefully it, that will make it limitless, um, except for importing like a picture of yourself or you know something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I realized too that I showed you the intro video for Scratch and not for VidCode, so my apologies. But you could access the intro video at any time, um, so I should have I should have mentioned that. Okay. So to edit them as in pull them apart if you want to change the order or like the say block in order to edit it to say yeah, something different? Exactly say okay. I would love to take a look after. Maybe you could show me. Ah, really? What? Okay. Huh. Okay. All on, that was all on laptops? Okay. Okay. Oh, good feedback though. Any other initial impressions or feedback? So I'll just quickly um, uh, mention um, something that a couple people were asking about. So you do need to have a BrainPop subscription to be able to um, access creative coding with the creative coding package, which is kind of like an add-on to your subscription, which means that kids need to be able to have their own accounts when they're creating artifacts, to be able to save it, to be able to submit it their, to their teacher, et cetera. Um, and I have my cards here if anybody's interested in more details on that, or if you are not sure if you have access to a BrainPop account or not, I can help you figure that out. Yeah, you have access to it, so that's just a matter of um, going into, uh, I'll show you after, but there's a, on the footer of every BrainPop page, there's a section called BrainPop Educators Support Section. I'll pull it up very quickly. And so if you go into BrainPop Educators, along the left side um, navigation, if you go into Tool and Feature Support, the very first option is Individual Accounts. And that will walk you through in every way possible, through videos, through step-by-step -step guides, 
um, how to set up your individual accounts as a teacher and then as, as students. And as a teacher, um, I would create my own class code, share that with my students. They would then enter that code and be prompted to join the class. So it's kind of a common way of, of um, class creation that a lot of websites use. Yep. Yeah. So I'll go into the multiplication topic. So on all of our math related topics, there's a scratch project in creative coding called math problem. So essentially educators are often tasked with doing math problems, word problems, which always feels like, you know, if I had three birds and one bird flew away, like pages and pages of math problems on paper, so we tried to, to make it like kind of a fresher approach to illustrate, to create an illustrative project. So that's under there. The other thing is that on, um, on all of our brain pop topics separate from creative coding, we have a couple other student creativity tools as a way for kids to show what they know. So we have a concept mapping tool called Make a Map. We have a very stripped down movie maker tool, super simple but really effective so kids can create their own brain pop style movies to show what they know. So um, this is what we were talking about. Hopefully we're getting kids and teachers to think about using code as a way to show what you know, just like you might do a variety of other projects. And brain pop is hoping that by having multiple tool, student creativity tools, we're giving kids choice. So maybe not every kid is gonna be super excited about coding and that's okay. They might choose to do an offline activity or maybe to make a movie or to use a concept map. Um, so it's kind of also about just student choice. Any other questions? Oh, it's a new, uh, oh, I thought it was New Zella. It's um, uh, revised activities. So I'm not sure if you've looked at it in a while because BrainPop has had this for feature for a long time, but we now have different tabs for, um, in our activities. So uh, Newzell is relatively new actually, so I would say it's probably been this past school year. So we um, partner with Newzella, so on every brain pop topic, there's a related Newzella um, article that you can differentiate. You don't have to have Newzella, no. So it gives you a little message that you're leaving Newzella, uh, leaving brain pop, and then you've got the. Um, the option to change the lexicon level. Yeah, yeah. yay, good, good. Any other questions or feedback? Okay, I've got my um, contact information up here or I'll put my cards out on the table, but um, please uh, let me know if you have any feedback as you hopefully play around with this. Um, you can use the same URL to play around with it when you get back to your headquarters and have some time to use it with students or to do some planning. Um, we'll be adding some more free coding content um, around the CS for All conference in October for a couple of months, so that's another opportunity to play around with it. And um, what's I going to say? Um, mm, I lost my, oh, I know. Uh, the other thing to, to note on BrainPop is if you search BrainPop for computer science, it'll autofill. Computer science and coding, we have what we call a collection. Um, so it's a collection of all of our resources around a certain theme. And we've added a few new BrainPop movies since we did creative coding. So we now have, um, <coughs> functions, we have variables, we have Ada Lovelace, so a whole bunch of different um, uh, different brain pop topics. Then we also have games. I mentioned we have coding games. Uh, I know Bobby is um, giving a, a sneak peek of his game Codemancer in the arcade area tomorrow. Yep. Um, so there's really amazing resources right now around coding. If it's something that you want to bring to your kids. Come find us and we'll tell you more about it. Thank you all for coming. I'll stick around. I'll put my contact information back up. And happy coding. Thank you. <laughs>